Hi, I'm Chloe Pearce and I'm going to be talking about representation of characters and the voiceover. Hi, I'm Dexter Horry and I'm going to be talking about editing and sound. Hi, I'm Greg Lake Hollandale and I'll be talking about the mise-en-scene and the narrative structure. Hi, I'm Joe Reynolds and I'm doing cinematography and titles and we're 203D. We initially researched different social realism films that could help with our trailer. We looked at Kidulthood, Adulthood, Bullet Boy, Fish Tank and This Is England. When we had our initial film idea, we had loads of different ideas inspired by a range of films like Kid Hood and This Is England. However, as our idea developed, we learnt that some of these ideas would be impractical. For example, during the sh shop robbery scene in This Is England, Combo holds a machete. We weren't allowed to use knives in our trailer, so we swapped it for a baseball bat. For the cash point mugging, we were going to use a gun. But again, we weren't allowed to use uh, guns or knives, so... We had Kelvin just beating up the person. We were also going to have the, poli the police chase our protagonist and our loan shark, similar to the police chase in adulthood. However, this was later ditched because we couldn't get an on-duty police officer to act in, a in our film. As Nick Lacey famously said, understanding the genre of a film is really important. Therefore, sticking to the conventions of the genre was really important when making our trailer. The way we stuck to the typical social realism conventions. When we shot all of our scenes, we made sure they were all very gritty, working-class urban areas. We also kept our characters looking working-class with their costumes and the way they spoke. Our storyline was based around on how our character coped with the life struggle, and we also stuck to realistic settings, situations, sound effects. And typically, our character was meant to overcome his life struggle by the end of it. The films that were mostly influential in our trailer were Kid at Hood and Adderhood because they're very similar in terms of content and narrative. In the magazine film cover, we had to stick to the conventions of the genre as well as the magazine. For example, when sticking to the social realism conventions, we used a picture of the main character with his arms folded, which represented his masculinity as well as his defensive body language, which represented his character. We also use very dim, dingy colours, which is very typical of a social realism. We also had to stick to the conventions of Empire magazine. For example, using bright colours such as red and yellow because the magazine typically appeals to male population as it represents emotions such as anger, violence and sex. This fits in with the narrative of our trailer too. We mainly used Empire because it's a very well-known established film magazine which has a 75% male audience. These statistics are what convinced us to use Empire as a magazine because our target audience are mainly from the male gender. In the poster we chose to use colours that weren't vibrant as it keeps the urban theme. We also chose colours that didn't clash. The images of the characters, as you can see, their lower bodies are faded so that the text would stand out. When choosing the font of the title we used the same font that we used in the trailer. We also had Kelvin on the far left side to leave room for the title. And we also then put three other characters underneath the title. Similar to the Shank poster, poster where they have the whole cast running towards the camera. We also stuck a few film awards on there to help advertise the film because this is a common convention of posters. You got 48 hours to get my money, or I'll come and get you, and I will kill you. Give me the money now. What are you talking about? Man, coming to our front door every night, asking for our money. What is going on? That's just the boys, isn't it? But it's not the boys, is it? Really? Because your boys don't steal from you. Hello? I'm in some trouble. We're being evicted. I need to make a lot of money. 45 grand in the next few days. Can you help me out?
soundtrack for a trailer starts at this establishing shot where it introduces the setting and main character. We started at this point because we wanted to, yeah, we wanted our audience to be engaged at the start of the trailer till the end. We sped up the establishing shot to give it a sense of time passing by in the location. In this scene, we only used non-diegetic sound. This shot is stereotypical of our genre due to the large council flats and recycled depot, which shows a working class location. The location shows a similar setting to the film Bullet Boy. As you can see, the large block of flats is a main representation as it signifies working class people. The cars moving faster represent time moving quicker, which fits with the title of the film. Long shot of the place where the film is set. High rise buildings on the far right hand side, leaving a patch of negative space on the left hand side, which we could have used to put a title card. Low, ang low angle 180 shot, introducing our main character. The shot was deliberately framed to make the background urban decay and vandalism. For our main character we used a black youth. Black youths are typically demonised by the media. He is chewing gum, which represents him as cocky, confident and rebellious. We've also used a young character, as our target audience is mainly young adults, so he would relate to them more. Our, a big influence of our film was also Kidulthood, and the main character used in Kidulthood was also a young adult. Over the title, there's a voiceover of Nikki saying you have 48 hours, which directly introduces the narrative of the trailer. And this also runs through the 360 shot of Kelvin and over the extreme close-up of Nikki's face. In every shot, we made sure we edited every movement to match the pace of the trailer. Throughout the trailer, we had very little diegetic sound because we wanted the soundtrack to be our main selling point because of its youth audience. The dream close-up of Nicky's lips was inspired by a shot in Bullet Boy. This shot only shows Nicky's lips to make him seem more mysterious and intimidating without using mise-en-scene and only using cinematography. The fact that this character is saying, I will kill you, reinforces the stereotypical characteristics of a loan shark of being dangerous, powerful and dominant. This shot is a mid-establishing shot of Kelvin walking into the shop with a baseball bat. This shot is of a working class corner shot which fits with our genre. The character has a bat in his hand and still dressed in a hooded jacket and tracksuit bottoms which gives the viewer a clear understanding of violence. Also giving an idea of violence is the dark location, which is mysterious or eerie to some people, which can give a feeling of discomfort. In the shot where Kelvin rushes through the shop door, we have some diegetic and non-diegetic sound of Kelvin demanding money from the shop owner with the soundtrack in the background. We've done this to keep the pace of the trailer and also alert the audience what the characters are after. This low angle mid shot of Kelvin was framed to show the high rise buildings in the background. This shot of him kicking the can represents him as antisocial and frustrated. This could fit in with his struggle that he's having to cope with in the narrative. In the shot where Kelvin kicks the chewing gum, we made sure that it matched with the drop of the soundtrack to signal the beginning and increase in tempo and the atmosphere. The shot shows Ellie's expression, feel more real and means the audience can empathise with the characters. Here the character is shouting very loudly, which portrays her as very antisocial and aggressive, which is quite typical of a, of a working class character. She is also, also has her hair up very high with makeup, which is quite stereotypical of working class people as it's a very chavvy appearance. The chavvy appearance came from the influence of the films we researched initially, such as Kidulthood, Adulthood and Bullet Boy. Low angle mid shot and Kelvin is centred in the screen. This shot in This Is England, where Combo robs a shop. The colour of the bat is red. The, the colour red rep... <laughs> <laughs> the colour red symbolises violence and anger. This is significant to the film because this colour is a physical embodiment of the character's emotion. The signs located around the shop are almost the hidden message containing words like illegal and smile you're on CCTV. They are all cautions, yet he is still breaking the law. <laughs> the 
criminal activity of robbery in this shot is very stereotypical of working class youths, especially in struggling situations. We have used the character of an Indian ethnic origin, which is stereotypically depicted as shopkeepers by the media. So we have used this as a convention of social realism. A big influence of this shot was kiddohood, as the very symbolic weapon used was the baseball bat. So we've taken this on in our trailer. This close-up of Kelvin shows Kelvin's expression and he's placed on the far right third, leaving a patch of negative space where we could have put a title card. This shot includes technology such as the webcam and the TV. This would relate to our audience as we've targeted young people. Again, Kelvin is wearing the colour red, which represents violence. As our character is arguing in this scene, it represents him as quite antisocial and aggressive. relationship between Kelvin and myself being mugged. This scene is located at a bank to show him stealing money from someone. The dark location represents car crime and danger. The criminal activity in this scene is again stereotypical of a social realism and, and a working class character. The fact that he's got his hood up also portrays him as quite dangerous. In the shot where Calvin punches the stranger at the ATM, there's a flash to help portray the impact and shock of this act. This close-up of Kelvin rapping. This is, this is a close-up of Kelvin rapping. Eyes placed on top third and the grey hoodie with the grey soundproofing help to frame the shot nicely and focus the camera on Kelvin's face so you can read Kelvin's expression. Rapping is a hobby based, which is quite stereotypical of black youths. The fact that he's got his hoodie up is stereotypical of thugs and portrays him as quite rebellious. This is a static mid shot of Dex closing his car door. The doorway helps to frame the shot nicely. The urban location is perfect for a social realism genre as the location is gritty, which shows working class people. In this shot, as he shuts the door, he screws up his face, which could portray him as quite aggressive. Again, he's wearing a hooded coat which is demonised by the media and is very based around working class youths. This is a panning shot of Kelvin walking. The shot was deliberately framed so that the graffiti was in the background. Graffiti is a stereotypical setting for social realism as it is a sign of crime and vandalism. In the scene where Kelvin is walking in the street, we added some non diegetic sound of the police sirens to give the scene a sense of urgency and alertness. This is a mid shot of Nikki walking towards the camera. This shot was deliberately framed to leave Nikki on the left hand side so there would be room for his title card. In this shot, he's meant to look very aggressive and threatening, which is very stereoty stereotypical of his character as a loan shark, as they're meant to be portrayed as quite dangerous. We reinforced his aggression by dressing him as a stereotypical thug. We also put him in an urban location which is stereotypical of the working class as well. Okay. For the first piece of voiceover that we used was the argument between the characters. As she says, this man, she's talking about the loan shark, so we timed it perfectly when we actually showed the loan shark looking really aggressive. The whole content of the, co of the conversation is about the life struggle that they're coping with and the crime of someone stealing from them. They use slang words like in it, which is very stereotypical of youths today. We use the characters to give a sense of narrative and we also want to give some of the narrative away but not give too much away so the audience feel intrigued. This high angle panning shot starts zoomed in and then slowly zooms out. This is to make Kelvin look isolated and alone. The location is typical of the, the genre. It includes building works, which could be a sign of unfinished business. Also includes vandalism, which represents crime. The fact that Kelvin is wandering around on his own with his hands in his pockets looking at the floor is meant to portray him as quite lost because of the life struggle he is coping with. Bullet boy. After that, we have a high angle of Kelvin walking along the street with the voice of Ellie Caradon from the previous scene. That's where action will take place. 
These locations are stereotypical of the social realism genre. Many of the shots have similar locations that represent social realism. As Nick Lacey says, that some of the gen genre is fairly fixed by the time and locations and others could have virtually any setting. This is another long shot that is used to help establish the area in which the story will take place. For the second voiceover, we use the phone call between the main character and his friend asking for help because he's coping with a very serious life struggle and could be in a lot of trouble and danger. By using this, it advances the plot by giving a certain amount of information away about the narrative but not giving too much away so the audience again feel very intrigued. By using this voiceover as well as shots on top means we can look at two things at once and get more done in a certain amount of time as we were limited with time. Yeah, that was... This shot is a long shot of the main street near Reggie's house. In the frame, you see the nomination for BAFTA award title, which is placed at the bottom because it seemed like the most negative spaced area. Over this shot, you can hear the non-diegetic sound of the phone call between Reggie and his friend. This non-diegetic sound is also used over the stair and shop scene to reflect the actions and crimes he had to commit to keep his loved one safe. This low angle long shot shows the relationship between the two characters. The low angle also gives a sense of perspective of how high up they are. This is a mid shot of Kelvin holding a baseball bat. The fact that we use CCTV enhanced the criminal activity and made it look a lot more realistic, portraying the main character as a lot more dangerous. This is a high angle shot of Kelvin robbing a shop in CCTV. For the shop scene, we slow down the speed to make it look more dramatic. We use a CCTV cam as well to add a different and unique look to it. This is an over-the-shoulder shot to show Kelvin's expression. The rooftop location is stereotypical of the social realism genre. By using the dangerous location like the roof makes the criminal look more dangerous. We film this shot by sticking the camera in the back of Dex's car and then driving away while Dex chased. <laughs> the dark location also represents mystery, which gives a feeling of discomfort. The narrative structure is broken into three acts. Act one is the equilibrium and the disruption. The disruption is the eviction letter, saying they need the money by the end of the week. Act two is the struggle. The struggle is when he borrows the money off the loan shark. Act three is back to the equilibrium. Our main character gets away and gets back away with the money and lives his life happy ever after. Entertainment presents. When picking a cinematic for this title, we looked at loads. Some were more complex and impressive than others. In the end, we decided to go for a more understated one because most production companies that fund our no-budget social realism films have understated cinematics. For example, Vert Vertigo Films, who were involved in the making of London to Brighton. Our first in-film title says from the directing duo Greg Lake and Joe Reynolds. This title starts off out of focus and slowly grows and comes into focus. This technique is taken off kiddothood because it was one of our research films. For our third title, we decided to incorporate Nicky's name into the image because the timing of Ellie describing him, the music and the shot felt perfect to introduce his name at the same time. Our fourth title shows the award we were nominated for. A lot of films we researched, like London to Brighton, had positive reviews of their film and awards advertising, awards they had won advertised during their trailer. So we decided to do the same. Also, this part of the trailer needed to be broken up because it felt a bit flat and boring otherwise. This title was a match on action. We had Kelvin robbing the shop, his name, and then back to Kelvin robbing the shop again. We put the word introducing in front of his name because obviously he's not a well-known actor, so this is his debut appearance. For this title, we emphasised the title of the film by using a gun sound. We also had it flash white before the title came up, similar to Kid Hood with the white flash and the scream. We used a font that looked urban. The font has an urban skyline on the bottom and the title is a metallic colour to help it stand out. 